Today is Windsor Knot, full Windsor Knot, not a half Windsor, a full Windsor. A full Windsor is important because it covers up the shirt behind the knot if you do it right. You see, I'm pulling down on my shirt here and lifting up on the tie and pulling the shirt down behind the knot. You don't want the whites showing there. That makes you a hillbilly. This a custom shirt, fits across the shoulders exactly. You'll be wearing a standard point collar, most of you guys. I like tab, snap tab it has a little piece of cloth that sticks out here and a little piece of cloth there and goes under the tie and makes it stand up like that and buttons behind there like that. I get those custom made, you're very hard to find in the store. Okay, the next thing you'll see is me tying a Windsor knot. Until then, hang in there. Good afternoon. I got feedback on my Windsor knot video that the shirt and the tie were too close to the same color, so I'm doing it with a white shirt and a blue tie. Step one, don't button the collar, turn up the collar. I'm ambidextrous, so I don't really know which hand you'll use. I happen to do it this way. This is the blade side. This is the tail side. I'm going back and forth on my collar to make sure it goes under the collar when I turn the collar down. Makes you look like a hick if your tie is sticking out from the underneath the collar in the back. Okay, we're gonna now we're gonna button the collar. Now we'll give it another pull, make sure it's not sticking out under the back of the collar. And I start my tie with it on the fourth button. One, two, three, four. You can't see where it is. That means I'm taller than most guys. This is a standard length tie. You have to keep doing this over and over until you figure out where the tail goes to make the bottom of the tie. This point comes out in the middle of the belt. Like that, in the middle of the belt. Not at the top of the belt, not at the bottom, in the middle of the belt. And the length is determined by where this starts on you. One, two, three, four, there we go. Blade goes over the tail. I'm ambidextrous, so I don't know which hand you're gonna use. I pinch it really hard with my thumb. <clears throat> thumb and forefinger holding the, tie, the blade to the tail. Go up through. There we go, that's half of the V. Go around behind. Come up through and down through again. Makes the other half of the V. That's what makes the tie V-shaped and symmetrical. There you can see it's a V. I'm holding, I'm holding everything tight, so we don't want this to slip. That's how the tie knot gets too big. Cross over the front, pinching, letting go of the tail, up through the back. Pinching as hard as I can right here with thumb in the back, forefinger in the front, pinching hard. What am I doing? Up through, yeah, there we go. Now we're going to go down through the part we just put across the front. Down through. Holding it real tight with my thumb. Pulling on this blade really hard. There we go. Makes a nice V shape. Now, this is called cinching the tie. Holding on the tail, grabbing the knot, rocking back and forth and sliding it up. Take it up nice and tight, snug. Pull down on the shirt. Pull down on the shirt, hold up on the knot. You don't want to show any white there behind the knot. That makes you a hillbilly too. Now you can take your finger and fool around with this, try to get some what are called dimples in there. There we go. If you don't do that, it looks like a hangman's knot just hanging there. You'll see that description in this book. I advise you to get this book, not the Kindle, get the book. And you'll see one of my favorite people with a full Windsor knot, Ronald Reagan. There, now we're done. On the back of the tie, there's a loop and a label. You put the 
the tail through the loop. And that keeps the tail from coming up from behind the tie and making you look like you got half dressed, half assed, in other words. You want to be put together from the top to the bottom. That's a full Windsor knot. Okay, to untie the tie, rock it back and forth. And then you're going to pull the blade up through where you stuck it down through. Get it, get it undone so you can see what you're looking at there. Now I'm going to pull that up through there, and then that voice from destroying the tie. I've destroyed two of my favorite ties that way. Not expensive ties, but they were my favorites, and they're hard to hard to rip, hard to duplicate. They were both pattern ties. And I recommend all you guys that are just learning this don't ever wear a pattern tie. Only go with a solid color tie because if you pick the wrong pattern, it ruins everything. You look like an idiot, simple English.